Welcome, everyone. Uh, before we start and do a proper welcoming, I just want to do a land acknowledgement. So uh, the Charlottetown Food Council acknowledges that uh, we are meeting on land known as Abigway, and uh, it's a traditional and unceded uh, territory and homeland of the Mi'kmaq First Nations. Um, It's, it's, uh, it's good to make a uh, land acknowledgement, but uh, I hope that we all can uh, uh, move to action as well, as uh, we're all uh, treaty people. And um, it's, it's not just a platitude to say that, that we believe in this, but uh, to make our, our actions uh, speak as loud as those words. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. Um, I'll call the meeting to order. And I'd like to welcome some of our new members and old members, because we haven't met in a little while now. Um, I think uh, first on my list I have uh, Jordan McIntyre. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I hate to put people on the spot. Do you want to say a little something about yourself? Sure, yeah. Hi Megan. Hi. <laughs> um, so I'm Jordan McIntyre and uh, I'm the, I brought some props. Um, I'm the CEO and the founder of uh, Mary Manette Seafood. So it's a uh, smoked tin seafood conservas company. So we sell um, this like this wild caught Nova Scotia herring. Uh, we sell like a secouturi sauce. That's my own recipe. Lemon horse fresh cream sauce. We also sell like a smoked tin Canadian mussel, smoked tin PEI oyster. Um, so we're sort of um, value adding to Canadian and Atlantic Canadian seafood products. Um, and Mary Manette was my uh, my great grandmother, and she actually sold this exact same wild caught Nova Scotia herring at the Halifax Farmers Market. So she was from a little fishing village on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia, and she would take a horse and wagon through the night to get to the farmers market. And so I sort of branded the whole company around her, and uh, that got me into the food industry, the food business, and. Um, and uh, so we, you know, we do a lot of work. Like we have a national distributor, um, and uh, we just actually um, signed up with Covered Bridge for a regional distributor. So we're sort of we're getting there. We're, we're a startup, but um, but uh, I've learned a lot about the food industry um, since I started the company. So I'm really excited to learn more from you guys and to apply uh, apply what I know to the work that you do. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, next is uh, Samara Rose. We'll go with the new members first, and then we'll go. With existing members. Sure. Welcome, Hi. Samara. Hi, thanks. Um, Samara, um, I'm from PEI. I'm not a great speaker, and I've also been off work for a couple of months, so I'm not practice socially. <laughs> <laughs> so, give me a minute. <laughs> um, I love food. <laughs> I traveled a lot, so I really learned, like when I was around 20, about 10, 12 years ago. Um, I found it really fascinating the way different parts of the world treated food, treated um, food in their culture, the way they respected food and gave it honor before they ate in a lot of places. Um, the way they, in some places, take longer breaks for lunch, their family meals can last 10 hours, and the way that they also know exactly where it comes from. One of my trips back to Europe, I came home and I asked one of my family members, do you know where the chicken comes from? In this Superstore here, and they honestly couldn't tell me. I thought that was really fascinating, so it kind of became a passion that way. And then um, I recently ended my 10 year, 10, 12 year travel stint, came home just in time to get a permanent job with newcomers, and so I'm still dealing with a lot of the um, difficulties that comes with not having a lot of money and having a big family and not being able to afford to eat, especially what what is here on the island because a lot of people come from places where they can grow year round and they're used to all this availability. They can grow very cheap filling food in their backyard. So when they come here and they have no idea what's going on, it's um, that opened my eyes in a whole new way. And then um, now I, I garden and I often visit the Legacy Garden and help out and I just kind of got involved that way and now I'm just very passionate about the whole thing. So that's kind of where I'm at. Great. Thank you for sharing. Welcome. And next is uh, Sean Martin. Very good. Thanks, sir. Yeah, so I'm Sean. Um, I am originally from Leary up west. Um, I uh, now live here in Charlottetown. Um, I'm a uh, social worker by trade. Um, I've worked in addictions and mental health as a counselor therapist. 
in recent years I've worked in public policy, at first in healthcare. Um, currently I work in policy with the BDI Department of Agriculture and Land. That includes agriculture policy, of course, it also includes food policy. So whether that's um, food policy around sustainable food systems, around um, local food networks, uh, around uh, community food security, we're gradually carving out some space there for food policy in addition to agriculture policy. Um, and so that was part of my interest was uh, applying some of that uh, experience to a group like this and contributing however I can. And um, I'm also just motivated to uh, to uh, uh, volunteer in my community. I uh, or to, to give back in any case. I, I, I discovered after there's a brilliant, so I guess I can't call it volunteer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to, to give back in any case. Um, I moved back to the island just a, a, about two years ago now. So uh, quite uh, keen to uh, to get involved and to uh, to give back. Thank you, John. Thanks for sharing. Um, maybe we'll go the other way around, counterclockwise, start with Brad. Yeah, uh, yeah. my name is Brad Drong, uh, I'm owner and operator, founder of Delicatessen, um, and uh, yeah, I've been on the council for a year now, I guess, uh, started last September, and um, been on the island for about three and a half. My whole family's from here, I wasn't raised here, I was raised in Ontario, but uh, moved here, and then... Um, couldn't find a job anywhere, so I started my own. Yeah. Nice. Thanks, Megan. Uh, I'm Megan Adams, and I've been on the council now for two years, I guess. Um, and I started out on this council sort of in my citizen hat, but there's been a lot of ties to my work role. So I do work um, for the province as a health promoter in the chief public health office um, in the health promotion unit there. and so. The population health work that we do, a lot of that um, ties community engagement and community mobilization with, with upstream healthy public policy. Um, and there's a, a lot of ties to exactly what, what Sean was already talking about, so I won't uh, duplicate what he has said because uh, there are a lot of connects there as well. Um, previous to working <coughs> in the province here, my, um, my master's was in global health and development. Um, and I think that's where sort of my passion for sustainability and food systems and um, thriving communities would have started and um, similar to Samara traveling, like all those pieces and just passionate about thriving communities and um, contributing to sustainable food systems. And I feel like we've made some headway in the last couple of years, but I'm excited to, to really take it to the next level. So welcome new members. Thank you. I'm Sheena Matthew. Uh, I work for Dr. Drysdale, uh, and we have a small business, Forest Catering. We are at the farmer's market. Yeah, that's all. I was, we are in PI. It's been 15 years. We are. I'm from India. Thank you. Phil? Uh, Phil Ferraro. Um, uh, currently, I uh, am the uh, manager of the uh, Farm Center started the Legacy Garden back in 2014. Um, we have expanded every year so that this year we have 200 community garden plots and um, we give away thousands of pounds of food every year to various charities. Uh, my background is uh, back in the 80s myself and a small group of small farmers were among the first uh, certified organic producers in Atlanta, Canada. And uh, I've been uh, I've been a food ag, sustainable ag guy ever since I got and I also uh, manage an orchard at the uh, at the mount that uh, is in the second year transition to organic. Uh, if you want to pick apples probably a week and a half there'll be uh, Lots of pears and uh, honey crisp apples for picking. See you there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Katrina Crystal. Um, Crystal has been sending all the emails to all of you. Um, I work for the city full time as the sustainability officer. So I, this is just one piece of my job. Um, I do 
many different <laughs> things and deal with many different aspects of sustainability, but um, I would say that food is my favorite, so I really love that I get to work with this group. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. I guess my background, so I've been on the island for just about two years exactly. Um, I moved here from Ontario, but grew up in Manitoba. Um, yeah, kind of have more of a background in biology and like biomedical sort of field, so come at this a bit from a health perspective, um, but have very much switched gears to being sort of more of an environmentalist, environmental advocate. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what we can all do together. So welcome, everyone. Okay. My name is Bernie Clory. I'm uh, it's my third year on the council. Um, I used to be the uh, manager at the Toronto Town Farmers Market for the last seven years. I recently just took a position uh, being a registrar for multiple uh, regulating colleges for health professions here on Pete Young. Um, but I'm still avidly uh, involved in uh, food security and uh, anything to do with food. I volunteer with uh, uh, the community fridges here in, in Charlottetown. Um, we started a, a program at the farmer's market called Healthy Harvest, now in its uh, seventh year uh, to help with uh, food security. Um, just making sure my kids eat well, uh, my neighbors, um, just wanting to be part of the community. So uh, looking forward to having a really uh, positive, successful year ahead. Uh, hopefully we can do lots, even though with, uh, with COVID, we can still uh, get together and, and do things uh, that uh, we decide to do together, whatever objectives we, we come up with this year. So welcome everybody, glad to see all the faces. Put uh, uh, faces to the names too, for, for new people. Um, how's everybody feeling? Good? Okay? Not too, not too stressful? Okay. Um, we're going to get into the meeting, so uh, we need to appoint a secretary to take some minutes. I did break my laptop so that I could volunteer as first go because Bless. that was in there. Also, so does she want again? Cool. Who's going to fight you for it? So, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank okay. you. Uh, declarations of conflict of interest. So if there's anything on the agenda that you see might be a conflict of interest, uh, you should say so now. I have conflict of interest because I am part of community fridge, so yes. I won't be voting any okay. things. And, uh, but I, if you ha guys have any questions, I can ask. Okay. Um, I need to declare conflict as well because I'm a volunteer with the community fridge. Um, and at that point, when we get to that, um, I was going to ask Megan to chair that part, but you're taking the minutes, so that might be a little difficult. Would uh, Brad, Phil, anybody? J j just to take over the, the, the next point when we do the uh, community fridges? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll have to recuse myself. So we'll have someone else chair that part. Any other declaration of conflict of interest? Okay. I don't believe there's anything I need to declare for this meeting, but something I'm going to uh, take a look into and then to introduce myself as appropriate moving forward is uh, I believe that the department I work for mm -hmm. will fund projects under the Community Food Security Program yes. and some others. Okay. So um, I'll make sure to identify any projects that we fund and introduce myself to any folks or decisions on those. Perfect. Okay, so there being none, um, I guess we'll, or not that there were none, we've, we've identified and uh, we'll move on and deal with them as we come to that point in the agenda. Uh, review and approve the agenda. I think we, we've all received it last week. Is there any additions you'd like to put on to that agenda? Uh, just, uh, I don't know if, I forget whether I just sent that letter to Katrina or if I sent it to everybody. You did send it to everybody. I, think everybody. I did send it to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if it's time, I'd like to have some discussion around the points of erasing that letter. Yeah. Can we put it in the new business? Sure.
Oh, and one other thing too. Um, uh, there's an apartment being built on the corner of Young and Upper Prince, and I'd like to just raise some questions about that. Okay, so we've added a letter from Phil and question about apartment on Young and on Young. I forget the corner, sorry. Uh, Young and uh, Upper Prince. Uh, adoption of June fifteenth minutes. Um, Do we have a motion for agenda? Or no? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. We need to have an agenda for the motion. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Okay. Sheena, uh, motions. Do we have a seconder? I'll second. Jordan seconds. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Seeing none opposed. Motion carried. Um, Adoption of June 15th minutes. We've had a chance to read them. We sent them out. I sent them out again. I think I made them out with you. I didn't see any issues. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes that is presented? I'll, I'll do it. Motion. Brad, motions. Seconder? Second. Okay. Uh, Sean? All in favor? Uh, contrary minded. Okay. Motion carried. Um, items for discussion. We have housekeeping, Katrina. Yeah, nothing major, just a few little things, I guess. One being that I completely, I meant to mention this, but I completely forgot. On the podium in the middle is a sign in sheet. Um, if people can maybe sign in when they have a second or on their way out. Um, we're just supposed to be doing that now for the city processes. It's not something we've done before. I was supposed to be doing it for months and kept forgetting and <laughs> was sending everybody on their behalf. But if we can do it properly, that would probably be a good idea. Um, so there's that. And then the other thing was just for new members, um, if any of you have the form that I sent around so that you can receive your stipend, um, if you can give that to me today, that'd be great. If not, if you can email it to me in the next couple of days, that would be awesome. Um, but otherwise, I don't have too much. Is there anything other than that that we should mention, just sort of general how this all works? <coughs> yeah, there's washrooms just across the hall. If anybody needs, if anybody ever needs water, you can just ask. I can get you a glass. And there's a cooler next door. Um, I think I mentioned in one of the emails. We'll generally hold the meetings in here, um, but sometimes we do get bumped out because of a special meeting of council. They take precedent over everybody else. So. Um, in that case, usually, sometimes we try and reschedule, but usually we just bump it to an online meeting so that we don't have to worry about accommodating some of the people's schedules. Um, and then, likewise, depending, I mean, we'll base it, of course, on the COVID situation and if needed, we'll move to a virtual setting for that. Um, anything else? And I guess I didn't really explain my role with the Food Council when it was my turn, but um, I'm sort of with the staff liaison with the Food Council. Like, remember the official title but um, basically I'm just the bridge between this group and the city itself so um, the way that it works is we as a department the environment and sustainability department report to a standing committee of city councillors um, so this group also falls under that group so the environment and sustainability standing committee so anything that basically the food council wants to do needs to get approved through that committee of city councillors. And so that channel generally goes through me. Sometimes there's opportunity for members of this group to come and present something if they want, but generally um, someone here or in consultation with me would put together the report that would then go to council. Um, if it was some kind of initiative that didn't cost anything, it would be more just an update to them. We don't necessarily need their permission. It's more for expenditures that we would take to them. Um, so this group, or I guess our department, is generally given about a $10,000 budget for food projects annually. So that's from like the fiscal year, so starting in April. Um, and some of that ends up getting used by staff, and some of it um, through like conversation here can be used um, 
based on projects or things that this group wants to fund. But again, it, it, the channel of it would be to write the report and have it go to our standing committee for approval of those expenditures. Um, and then as well, I um, a lot of the work done by this group sort of sits with this group and it's obviously you're, uh, there's a small statement but essentially you're a group of volunteers. But um, so most of the work gets done there, but in my role too, where I have capacity, um, sometimes take on pieces of that as well, just because it's of interest and relevance to my job. But yeah, that's all I can think of. Anything else for me? I would say we would not function without Katrina, so mm -hmm. I'd like to <laughs> acknowledge that. <laughs> yep. Is. Uh, she runs a lot of this for us. It's, it's a lot of work behind the scenes even after we leave, so uh, thanks for everything you do. Um, okay, housekeeping. Uh, any questions from uh, any council yeah. members on housekeeping or anything so far? We're trying to keep it pretty informal. Are snacks okay in here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. No, totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> All of the city council meetings are catered, and you, if you <laughs> were to attend or watch the videos, you oh, frequently okay. see council members eating in here, so okay. no worries. Okay, we'll move on then. Uh, next on the item is Community Fridge Project, which uh, I will recuse myself as a volunteer with the organization and uh, ask someone else to share that part. Did we circulate the letter, or did just you and I get it? Um, I think just you and I got it. Sheena can speak to it. Do you want to speak to Sheena? I did for a copy. Do you want to speak to the letter that uh, Sandra sent, or do you want? Oh, I don't have the letter. Do you want a copy, or you can read it? I can, I can explain. Yeah, I okay. can explain if you don't want. <laughs> if you're sure. Before you do that, is there someone? Someone's going to share this part so we can, because I think there'll be there might be a vote on this. I'm not sure. But, uh, we have to yeah, well, I, I thought Brad had felt yeah. here, but if not, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I agree with the chair. Okay, yeah. great. You proceed. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Brad. Um, you proceed. <laughs> is everybody familiar with the Community Fridge Project? Like, has everybody seen, know what we're talking about, kind of thing? Yeah. So basically, the letter is a request from Sandra, who is. Would I be correct in saying the main organizer of the project or one of the main organizers? Yeah. Um, requesting funding for the project. So um, basically she's just describing what the project is. So it's an outdoor fridge that is a basic, um, it's, I think she describes it as neighbors taking care of neighbors. So food is put in the fridge and then anybody can come and take it at any hour of the day. Um, and so she's saying that in the last couple of months, what? Uh, August 8th, 2021 was the day it opened, and in the few months since then, um, they've provided over 400 meals, and approximately, um, like individually packed meals, and approximately $3,000 worth of food. Um, and, but I think you're getting a lot of donations, but there's still kind of a need for yes. um, you guys to be um, filling the fridge in some capacity. Um, and so they're uh, saying it costs about 500 to $750 a month. Um, so they're requesting a $1,000 grant from this group to continue to run the fridge for the next couple of months. Um, yeah, so that's basically the gist of the letter. If anybody wants to see it, I can either email it or give you this copy. Um, can I say that's the most? Did you want to add anything, Shina? Pretty good. We are getting donations from Legacy Card and um, Harvest Festival uh, Superstore, and lots of other simple donations are getting too. But the f fridge is getting pretty empty within one hour, two hours. We went uh, just now before I came here, and it's fully empty. Mm -hmm. And we went to Harvest and got two bags of uh, beans and tomatoes. Within one hour, it will be going wow. pretty quick. And there was five people there, but they didn't have anything to take home, mm -hmm. so it was sad. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. What are the donations? Like, wh what are the types of food that Superstore is, is providing? Superstores is uh, giving two hundred and fifty dollar gift card, so we can go and get it. So we just mention every uh, uh, businesses saying that any surplus food we will we can take it. 
So, but you know, Harvest, uh, Harvest, Festival, uh, Harvest Wholesale is the only one that providing us regularly. And, and, and what is it that people are looking for in the fridge? Like, what, what do they like to pick up there? It doesn't matter. You know, we are uh, uh, from Legacy Garden, they put all the vegetable, fresh, fresh vegetables. And Betty Beck has been putting milk from ADL. Uh, so we had a request for ADL too, so we didn't got an answer yet. Uh, then we are providing hot meals. Pure Kitchen is providing the few uh, meals back. And us, we are providing the hot meals too. Then like oranges, fruits, milks, and we have a pantry section on the back of the side of the fridge. Uh, so lots of people are providing that, you know, packed items and tin foods and there is a accept acceptable and non-acceptable on the fridge, so we can look into that. And, yeah. So, and this is just another piece of information, not meant to like sway decision making in any way, but um, the so originally the request just came to our department, and we were able to give a five hundred dollar grant from our budget. So that's been done already, just so that you know. Um, that's kind of like the amount that's within our discretion to sort of be able to provide to a group that might approach us for funding that we think fits with our mandate. Um, and then so the recommendation from that was that if they were seeking additional funding to come to this group. Um, and then the process, if, if um, there's interest from this group in supporting this project in this way, would be kind of what I mentioned before, would be putting together a report to committee and then putting the request to them and they would kind of have the final say, but the first step would be this group deciding that it's a project that they want to support and that they would like to forward on to the committee for approval. So if I heard correctly, you're looking for $1,000, is that right? I think, yeah. That's and, the and yeah. what's the long-term plan for being financially self-reliant? Uh, there is a GoFundMe page created for all year long, so people are donating if they want to donate, they can do that. A mm -hmm. uh, couple of donations are getting, so because we have to pay the electricity bill uh, every month and the waste uh, we have to pay every month, uh, then the food, if the fridge, if it's empty, we are, we are purchasing the food from Superstore or whatever places we can get it cheaper. We are doing that, so that's why roughly 750. I think the committee was calculating around 750 per month. Per month, I go 70, 750 to uh, 1,000 dollars per month. Um, I think that's a good question, Phil, because um, I was going to raise it too. Um, and just for context for new members too, we actually were lucky enough to have Sandra come and present to us last year before um, the project even was in existence and obviously we were all kind of very excited about this idea it is a gap, a gap and a need um, and kind of a first for Charlottetown I assume PEI as well um, but yeah that, that was a question I had too and I just know that um, our the provincial wellness grant pro program did fund that um, fund this as a project as well very excitingly um, and so just thinking about long term like obviously I would be willing to continue to support community fridges to get up on their feet, but then how can we think about succession planning to ensure that it, it's not just a, you know, when we talk about local food assets, that it's not just something that's there and then all of a sudden it's gone, like how can we continue to build it so that um, it remains, but yeah, I don't know if that's anything we can do to support or maybe, um, you know, it's it's I mean, it's time to sort start kind of engaging with private sector other partners in that regard too. Um, I mean, it's great to hear that Harvest Wholesale, for example, is yeah. is really consistently donating. So if there's other, other distributors like that, or even having some pot of core funding coming from somewhere, like I'm and sure Heartbeat Organics, are, Heartbeat Organics is providing right, the premium yeah. tools. Which is great, but even yeah. with, for the electricity and, and, uh, and, the, waste. and the waste bills, waste. like great if we're getting food donations, but if you have that core funding coming in from somewhere, um, that would be really, really wonderful. I would hate to see something stop <laughs> it from happening. That's all I'll say. Stop Is the $1,000 just a one time? That's it, yes. 
Well, are we voting on whether or not the council will give the thousand then? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. To put that motion forward. Yeah. Yeah. So does somebody motion for that, sir? I, I might just ask a question. Yeah. Uh, and Leo, I forgive me. I don't know enough about the uh, project. Um, it is so. Um, I really like how it's kind of outreach oriented. It, it's it's located. Is it just off Queen Street by the? Uh, yes. yes. Excellent. Yeah. 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 I, yeah okay. I, I, I did see that. Um, yeah. I really like how it's outreach oriented. It's like low barrier. It's not limited to certain hours, like a food bank would be. And, and, and even when services are quite available, sometimes people just don't feel comfortable. So I really like the outreach orientation, the low barrier kind of design to it. Um, could, could you tell me a little more about the like the, the structure around it? I think I heard Megan mention that there is a, uh, a committee uh, supporting it. Who, who's, who's involved in this? So uh, first, my daughter is the one who started it. And we have, after everything was organized, we have started uh, got 13 members in the committee, so we are 13 members uh, now. So uh, every second week we will just get involved and discuss how the food has to be made and like the expenses and stuff, we are talking about it. And the volunteers, there is lots of behind the scene works, right? Uh, we have to monitor the fridge every day. So we are working with the health inspector and environmental health. Uh, so there was an inspection yesterday, it was everything went well. Uh, so every day, uh, tw twice a day, uh, people, volunteers are checking the fridge. And in between, like Bernie, uh, us, we all go and monitor and check everything is okay and stuff. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the volunteers are really great. They are doing and checking, they are sending the pictures each time. Whoever goes to the fridge, they will check. The, so that's why we know that how many, how much food they are in, and how much it's going out. And uh, we told all, uh, each people who are contributing, or we know that to take the picture when they put the uh, items in. So we know that how much food it's in and going out. So yeah, that's the way we are monitoring now. Oh, that's great. It's great to hear that there's kind of that backbone. Support yes, behind those people. There is. And uh, working with the uh, with health inspector as well, just to kind of that buy in is really nice. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. I, I, I would also echo what, what people shared uh, with regards to uh, uh, a long term sustainable source of funding uh, would, would, would seem important. It's such a great project. Uh, um, it, it would be really important to see it continue. Um, and uh, if, if was it approximately 500 a month to call in? Was that, uh, yeah, we don't know. This is only we started August 8th, right? Early days, so, yeah. yeah, so yeah. we didn't start getting the bills now, only the electricity bill. And so, we have to for now uh, for the electricity we have paid and the structure. But they volunteer Congress teacher, he was Bob was really great. He volunteered to build the structure, only the material cost we had. So yeah, we have a couple of bills to be paid, yeah. but as uh, Megan said, a little bit donations are coming, but you know the bills are there too. So yeah. yeah, for the long run, as Megan said, we have to look forward, right, to get something in front to maintain everything. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, I'll, I'll just say this last thing because I don't want to monopolize or anything. It, it, it sounds like e even if it's above the 500 a month over time. It sounds like it's in the grand scheme of things relatively modest in terms of the amount of money it takes to provide a lot of meals to a lot of people. Um, and, and, and so I wonder, and this is just a question for, for, the, for the committee and the volunteers to consider, if um, it, it, I imagine it takes quite a bit of time and energy to contact donors of food. Yeah. And I wonder if some of that time and energy could be redirected towards identifying uh, sustainable funders could be, um, you know, local businesses saying would yeah. be willing to contribute. I mean, you find as few as five local businesses willing to contribute a hundred dollars a month, um, tax deductible, this sort of thing, and that time and energy could lead to steady funding. So that that's just a just a, a proposal, I guess. Um, but I'll I'll leave it at that, and I'll I'll uh, make sure to look into this and learn more about it. 
Um, have you approached Maritime Electric about sponsoring you uh, for the electric bill? We we have contacted in the first place, but we didn't hear anything from it, from them. Yeah. I'd be surprised okay. if they did if they didn't sponsor that. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good. Um, would you like me to help you with that? Like I can have you to. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We can connect after. Sure. So I think that's probably something that we can discuss as council, obviously, Bernie. And, um, sorry, your chair. <laughs> <laughs> just that made me think like I think the last time when Sandra was here we she sort of presented and it, we were obviously in support of the idea but what is it that we can do as a council obviously we'll vote now on sort of an perhaps motion I'll let you share that mm -hmm. part, Brad, for the financial piece but in terms of like contacting folks I think that's something that Sandra could probably reach out to us and or maybe we could have a discussion about how we do but maybe we'll start with the motion so that it doesn't yeah. get forgotten I don't know what are your thoughts Brad? well like like how are people finding out about it like because like obviously people know about it because the food's going every day and uh, yeah, there is lots of positive feedbacks and we have like, uh, there uh, uh, you know you can put the suggestions in uh, there is a board you can write it down so okay, okay. It, yeah but is it like mostly just social media uh, like like how has like how have people found out that this is the social media yeah it, okay so it's mostly social mostly media social so then the GoFundMe program is yes. kind of yeah, yeah. yeah and I think yeah what uh, Sean right? yeah what and we Sean said about reaching out to local businesses and Sandra has been contacting lots of local businesses yeah uh, sending all the uh, details and stuff to yeah, if they yeah. are interested they can contact yeah. to our yeah she yeah because I mean like well, I mean, like, my business would love to, mm -hmm. you know, donate to that. I don't know if you guys are going to meet her at all, but... Uh, yeah, roommate is not allowed. Well, it would be cool. The frozen, yeah, yeah, cooked, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, like, even, like, like it may just be easier for business just to give 50 bucks a month as opposed to, you know, um, you know, depending on, on what type of business it is or anything like that, there's definitely, there's a lot of businesses who want to be a part of the community, but don't deal in food all that much, or maybe the food that they're producing is not appropriate. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't see it being very difficult to make this like sustainable. I think the thousand dollars from the food council will be a good little cushion because you've only been going for a month and a half now. So, okay. uh, but I mean that's you know that's going to be you know that's going to be gone in like a month, right? Yeah. For for did, your bills. Did we? Did we write a letter already in support? Is it worthwhile maybe like looking at that letter and drafting it um, for businesses so that like Sandra, rather than like contacting businesses piecemeal, it could be maybe sent to a distribution list that you folks have um, with an attachment that says, you know, we as an advisory council are in support of this project. Like, I don't know if something like that would be helpful. I did want to make sure that we did write a letter. We, yeah, yeah, we did a letter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there any more questions or comments? Okay. Well, I think I think we should focus the discussion on the request first. Yes. And then so we need to have both. Someone ideas, needs to motion right? that. So I'll make a motion. Thank you that we support the community food bank for $1,000 mm -hmm. uh, on the condition that they do seek sustainable funding. Yeah. Thanks. And then is there a seconder? All, all four? Yep. Good. Motion passed. Yes. 
second month. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the offer that Jordan made, um, I think, should uh, be on behalf of the Charlottetown Food Council. Yeah. And I that uh, Jordan should be free to use our letterhead or a letter on behalf of the Food Council. We're asking Maritime Electric to donate the electricity. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone second that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Can you put Samara that? Second it? Yeah, I already I already had it actually before Phil started the motion. Amazing. So, you're, so <laughs> I was going to raise it to you. Okay, um, who seconded that? That's Mary. Okay. Um, and I can I'm happy to offer like a extra set of eyes on that draft if you want. And, and what, what is the bill every month? How much is it again? We didn't got the bill yet. Okay. So the first month, uh, we for the post and all, we paid for four hundred and eighty plus eighty some tax or something like that. That's all we paid so far. The monthly bill we didn't receive yet. So it's only one month, right? So hopefully it's not more than ten dollars. I would say. No, that's not much. <laughs> ten dollars. <laughs> you don't know yet. They said that when we asked. Oh, good. Yeah. I don't know about IWMC, but could I motion that we amend that motion to include IWMC too? I don't know if they'd be as, uh, hmm. I don't know if that's something they would do. But For like the waste pickup? Yeah. yeah. While we're at it? Yeah, why not? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Sure. Okay. Is it IWMC doing the pickup or is it, are you, you're they contracting it through yeah, IWMC or is it like yeah. superior? So, um, because they uh, added as a business for us because it's we, it's not a residential, right? Yeah, so okay. every two now. weeks they are charging 50, 50 or $75. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's do both, Megan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know how to approach this in the minutes, but can I just include IWMC in that or do we have to formally motion to a Thank you. Okay. Do we have a second for that motion? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Good. So we have the two motions. Uh, one is a recommendation for the thousand dollars with uh, you know that there will be identified sustainable income coming in. And uh, the second motion was for the letter to Maritime Electric and I IWMC to uh, waive fees. Good. Any other points to be brought up? Okay, I guess we can move on. Back to Bernie. You do, folks. Back <laughs> <laughs> again. Um, so next on the agenda is review of strategic plan. Moi and Katrina. Um, I was going to say a few words. Yeah, you can do it. Take it away. I have a vote for my stuff. So we did this uh, strategic planning last winter at the uh, fire hall. And uh, we went through a, a brief afternoon of, of objectives and ideas and where we were going. Uh, we worked a long time on uh, the uh, asset map that we now have on our website and uh, that took three years that was that was a big, that was a big piece and uh, so we we felt a bit okay we need to kind of redirect ourselves and try and get focused so this this was the strategic plan uh, and we came up with uh, a long-term and a short-term plan now uh, We'll decide as a council what we want to do, but uh, this evening was just to present to you what the short-term and long-term plan was and see if we want to continue with that uh, and uh, maybe identify committees and, and, and have a, a chat regarding the strategic priorities. So the priorities are for 2021 and 2022, so we still have another year left on these priorities. The long-term was municipal policy review. So, um, we had some committees looking at some of uh, policies that affect food and food security. And we were looking to see how we could improve upon them to ensure that we're meeting some of our uh, food security objectives. 
the second one, uh, which we identified as short term, was uh, town halls, conversations on food policy. Because of COVID-19, we weren't able to do that. We thought maybe we would do some polling with some questions, and we'd send them out via social media, some kind of media, uh, so people could get involved. Um, and, and that's where we stand uh, after a summer uh, break. Bernie, can you tell me what's, um, what's included on the food asset map? What's, what are our food assets? Uh, so that was a good question, uh, and still a good question, <laughs> because we were trying to see what is a food asset. So uh, gardens are food assets, but someone who uh, operates a business that is feeding individuals could be a food asset. We, we were all over the map, mm -hmm. all over the map. Okay. Uh, and it's a, well we can't, and, and people chime in, we, we came up at the end thinking this is a living document and if we always try to come up with a, uh, uh, a definition for everything, we, we weren't going to get the food map out. So mm -hmm. we just said, like, yeah. what we have now, we'll, we'll put it out and we're going to be adding to it and changing it. Because it is living, just like food. Yeah. Uh, this map's going to change. Um, yeah, Any, anybody else want to say something about it? Is this an agenda item? I can give some more context. Yeah, it is an agenda item a bit later on. Yeah. If we, oh, it's the oh, last agenda item. No, I can, but I can, I'm happy to offer, like, we can additional. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, it started, like, Asset mapping, Jess Brown had attended actually through my work um, an asset based community development co um, conference. And then we kind of like pulled all our brains together on this council because the council had started to list some really hard work was done um, by some members. I don't know if Phil, you were involved in making that list, but or Bernie, but um, some members had started making basically a spreadsheet like, what do we have that's our, what can we build on? Um, and I think the idea behind it is to really build on the strengths in a community as opposed to look at what's wrong or what's missing. Certainly there's gaps, obviously there's high rates of food insecurity and you know um, lack of access and all of those things, but what do we have in the community that we can build on? Um, and so then we decided to translate that list into something that we could actually use both as a food council where we can measure growth or decline of the resources we have over time, but also that we can engage community in. Um, and have it as an interactive tool so that you can see. So the one that we ended up coming up with is a map and you can break it down by ward, you can break it down by um, the categories of the food charter, charter that the Food Council here developed. So um, yeah, it's obviously it's our early stages and it's a question on what is a food asset, but I think we sort of see it as anything that pertains to a resource um, of our food system. What isn't on there are things like restaurants and whatnot right now but that's to the point of what Barney was speaking to like what's the scope of that um, but it could be anything from programs that exist to support food security it could be education tools um, or markets local vendors things like that um, yeah what about food producers? Like yeah, they, mm -hmm. they, that's a whole category of the of the food charter. Yeah. So yeah, um, and on the website, I guess um, relating to sort of housekeeping stuff. If you haven't been on there, there are the conversations about these. Maybe we're going to get into that later. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So on the food council website, on the city website, um, the food asset map is there. The food charter is there, and that's how we decided how to break it down. We had a lot of conversations about how do you break this massive list of like mm -hmm. random things that exist in our food system, and we broke them down by the um, the categories of the food charter, um, and those would be um, I feel horrible that I don't remember them all, but it's like kind of like production, distribution, and receiving food. Um, then there's like education and programs, then there's growing food and um, chime in if you That's like people me. like restaurants, people who will teach you about it, people who are just growing it. Yeah, all yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, it was a huge piece of work and it's a really, really exciting piece of work because there's nothing really that exists like that in this province. Mm -hmm. um, the PI Food Exchange has actually, I would be honest to say that 
not say this, but they did start a map originally, but it um, wasn't comprehensive and it wasn't specific to Charlottetown and it wasn't as broad in scope as the food charter categories were. So that's kind of some context for that. I'll look at it. Um, and I only am I'm speaking to it because I was heavily involved in that. But if you have questions. Okay. And, and do we like, is there a relationship between this committee and the Food Island Partnership? They were a panelist on one of our yeah. workshops. <laughs> yeah, there's not like a specific tie. We like, so the com community conversations that they can sort of briefly mentioned were these um, really amazing, it was a really amazing series of panel discussions that were organized, I guess it was a year ago almost, like last fall. I was just talking about it today and yeah, it, it was, was last crazy. November, December. Um, and they all sort of, the intent was sort of to couple that with the launch of the asset map and to kind of gain some public feedback. Um, it, the, the public feedback on the asset map itself was a little bit difficult because we had to switch from an in-person to an online setting because of COVID, but the conversations that were had mm -hmm. um, and the sort of insight into the map and the food system as a whole that was gained was really amazing. Um, and they're actually, but, they're recorded and yeah. they're on the website, so if you're, if you have time, like, Feel free to, to watch them. I've never watched them because I don't want to watch myself. Facility. <laughs> <laughs> just get anxious about that. But there were some really amazing panelists. And we and I think we started from like production, distribution, and receiving food. Kind of like Soleil Hutchinson, for example, was a speaker in one of them. And then the next one we talked, we had um, it was an opportunity to amplify BIPOC voices. And so we had like um, Chef Tara Reeves. We had. Breslin Knockwood from Apple First Nation come in and talk, um, Claire Byrne as well. And then we moved into, um, um, oh my gosh, I can't even remember the third one, but the last one was really about sort of how can we rally around celebrating food and Food Island Partnership um, was a part of that. Yeah, and, yeah, and so I, that. we worked really closely with them. And, yeah. um, and so it was like, it, is the seafood industry like fairly well represented on that map? Like, how, like, like it, when you look at like sort of assets, like, like, the, like there's a like like we are doing production on on PDI now, and there's like a canning line, and there's like is stuff like that included, or is it more sort of? I guess I know. Like, it would be, but it may not be. It depends on yeah. I mean, the public has the opportunity to contribute. Like if something's missing, okay. like we couldn't feasibly possibly know no, everything no. that exists. Definitely so not. I think that's the idea of like just getting it out in the public so that people can see that what it is. It's something they can throw it in. What's that? Yeah. So if they think if they know of something sort of obscure that maybe somebody else might know, they could add it to it. Yeah. 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 And feedback form. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It would come through the feedback form to me, and then I would do it or just so get our just so people just can't quit. Right. Right. It's, it's better. It's, it's, it's better. better. Yeah. It's better. yeah. yeah. And I think just one last thing that I'll say is the biggest piece of it as a tool for us and how it fed into the strap planning was that okay we've got this tool we know what our resources are here now what yeah. and so that's where you know we look at the gaps that might be on that map or we look at some of those pieces or we have conversations like the town halls for the short-term planning or we have um, we look at bylaws long-term planning and policy that might affect that so yeah. I'm gonna stop talking but Thank hopefully you. that's a good sign <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also in a couple other languages, I believe, right? Oh, that's the charter. The charter yes, that's is the food charter, yeah. in oh, but the map four or five is languages. It? Yeah, correct. Are we work? Is that something we're working on? Not actively, but it's an interesting question. I did get a couple of phone calls early on when we first launched a test with me in French specifically. Um, okay. But. I'm thinking more like yeah no totally yeah it was just that was those calls were what put it on the radar kind of like right. oh, maybe this should exist the complicated piece was more it's just slightly complicated given it's this like interactive tool that's not to say that it can't be done um and if that's decided as a priority by this group i don't see why it could be done. if it didn't have to be completely bilingual but more so just the navigational or the info parts, yeah. so that at least there could be a little description explaining what it is, maybe, yeah. um, in a few different languages. Absolutely. Maybe. Um, yeah. I mean, even if you had to add like a page to the website or something and just yeah. have it a little description or like a key 
of how to navigate the website itself because I think most people who would need to use it and who live here will be able with a little bit of help from people because that's the whole idea and come here in this community and you have to ask your neighbor for help so um, I think they'd be able to navigate the map part itself and be familiar with Charlottetown but it would wonder how um, yeah because the bulk of the information on the map itself is like a business name and then maybe a website and yeah. a phone number right but so I mean like you could probably translate the business names I think probably I'm assuming I yeah hope, or even like is there people in um, who work for the city as interpreters or translators like is there a number to call to say what is this or how can I use it because I fear a lot of the people who would bring the benefit from yeah. it don't speak English. Absolutely. No, I think that's a really, really good perspective. And even, and like you say, like, so your, your feeling is that they might be okay with the map itself once they're in it, but it's Once the, they know what they're looking at. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. But to go onto this website and say, well, what is this? Yeah. It's, uh, it's evident if you've used a similar type of application sure. before. Yeah. But many people haven't. Yeah. But having like a bit of a blurb or just something like a, a little key with yeah. because I noticed that um, let's say with the three different examples that um, yeah sorry oh Megan that's fine Megan Megan that Megan gave I think each dot was a different color yes so you could have a yeah. little description like if I said I I wasn't sure exactly the way the page the website itself was laid out but sometimes with web design you can just add another page yeah. and it can say other languages and you don't have to translate the whole site but you can just have a little key that says like this is what these colors of dots are like this is how you navigate it just even a little descriptor of maybe it's just a little link to google translate solves that problem well, well the thing with google translate is <laughs> It's awful. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, There'll be more I'm thinking, loss. I mean, yeah, you raise a very worthy concern, but from my perspective, um, we have two official languages, and I can see translating it into the two official languages. I think if the Newcomers Association wanted to take on a project to offer translation in numerous other languages, I think that would be welcome. But I don't know if we want to spend our resources translating it into every language somebody might suggest. Well, I would think we would have to pick our the main. Yeah, but it's something that was done with the food charter. The food charter mm -hmm. exists. I think it's is it French, English, French, Mandarin, English, and Arabic. Yeah, and the Canadian charter and the um, the IWMC have done it on theirs. They have yeah. copies. The uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, and uh, yeah, it's not in every single language. It might not be Somali, but it's definitely Arabic, definitely Mandarin, definitely, you know, Vietnamese, maybe. I'm just um, looking at the city website here, and there does look to be a translate function built into the city. There, there is, yeah. But I think it's tied to, I'm assuming, to Google Translate. Yeah, it would be imperfect. Um, we, we um, the, the Department of Agriculture and Land, um, try to make our content available in as many languages as possible is just part of our um, gender diversity and inclusion policy. So for example, when we administer surveys now, we cover uh, English, we cover French, uh, but then we are also um, uh, tar doing basically targeted recruitment. Uh, for example, if it's a survey, focusing on the subsequent most frequently spoken languages, whether that be um, uh, usually that's Chinese, uh, Arabic, and if it's agriculture, and for example, workers, we would include Spanish. So, when, and what we find is if it's static information, like information on a page, something you could print, it would be the same as on a website, then it's easier to translate. Um, but we tend to do it kind of strategically. Um, uh, uh, and, and I guess the last thing I'll say is probably best to if, if, if this was something the council wanted to recommend in terms of translation, to first check in with um, newcomers organizations, whether that be the association, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the Frankfurt equivalent, uh, to see what their views would be on what's kind of the priority content. For sure. Um, yeah. It may or may not be language. It may be, like we often find when we speak with newcomers in the department that um, 
the, the main priorities are access to certain types of food at certain type of, uh, times of year. Back yeah. to what was mentioned earlier, uh, most of the world you grow stuff year round. So, so uh, probably best to check in with different stakeholder groups on what the priorities are. We started talking about this in response to the strap. Do we want to come back to Yeah, that? that's oh, exactly what I was going to say. Just to bring it back to the, the strategy or the strategic planning. Uh, great conversations to have. Uh, and uh, I echo what uh, Sean says. Um, the, the folks who work in, in those fields will uh, quick guide us as to what to do next. And I'm wondering as we talk about, so one of the things you mentioned with the strategic planning, if one of the things we want to talk about is kind of a committee structure and like maybe have yeah. some of these conversations more in depth with a smaller group of the, the council um, to, to initiate some of these conversations and decide what the priorities are to bring back to the council as a whole to decide. We get, we get many conversations that come up in the run of a community meet, uh, council meeting. Um, and we could have many, many committees. Yeah, absolutely. On, on um, a lot of things that come up, um, which we can. Um, the strategic planning, one of the priorities was reviewing the bylaws so we can try and fix something that's static that we could change and reflect maybe a positive light to increase uh, food security. One of them was uh, like a greenhouses or planting a garden in your front wall or things like that that can, can have a direct effect on food security, which I think when we were as a, in our small communities looking at some of these bylaws, some things were missing. So in, in the lack in the absence of, um, it, do, it doesn't give much for citizens to know what they can and cannot do. Um, we had some examples of like greenhouses but you couldn't build it because it had a plastic roof or some kind of because it was an unsightly bylaw mm -hmm. uh, things like that I, I think the council can can change we can make those okay. those requests to city to change the bylaw because maybe they're not even aware of it uh, it sat there since 1936 you know that kind of yes thank you. So I just have a question about, um, and I know like maybe we can talk about this, where we're yeah. at with some of those, because I, I don't want to see a lot of the leg work that was done by some of these committees yeah. go go to yeah. wayside. But then maybe we're not interested in doing that, but if we're not interested in betting that, or maybe we're done with bylaws, I don't know, but at least have the conversation about seeing some of that through. But, I'm not yeah. sure we're done with bylaws because we didn't. Okay. Finish everything. We didn't finish. Any. I know we didn't. I'm just kind of. Yeah, I think there was a, one of the intents of the strategic planning conversation that's leading in because the next thing on the agenda is the policy review and then followed by the asset map. So I think the three of them together, the intent was kind of to like, here's what we have on the go. Mm -hmm. Who wants to work on what? Awesome. What are the? Are there things that want to be dropped and other interests that want to be pursued? That kind of thing. It'd be hard to talk about strategic planning and not talk about policy review and food yeah. asset. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, mean, um, I guess with, uh, with the food asset map, it's sort of an ongoing commitment of the food council. A ton of work went into it. We don't want to see it die. So, and there is ongoing maintenance and improvement that needs to be done. Um, and then with the policy review component, there's a lot of work that's been done over the last six months or so. Um, like a lot of background research and that kind of thing that also we don't want to. Die. So. so I leave it to the council for next steps. I'm just here to facilitate conversation and be part of the group. I don't want, I don't want to uh, tell them what to do or what they should do or not do. That's but I guess we need maybe a summary of where we're at yeah. with it though. Or like what kinds of, like you mentioned an example of a bylaw, but yep. we had I think four or five four. different We had four and two, two of our members, three of our members who were working, uh, two of the members who are working on food uh, acquisition are gone, but that was uh, 
Uh, oh, in, back, in, back, back here, here. Back here. Back here. Okay, so back here. That hope means gone. That hope means gone. Mm -hmm. uh, Colleen was working on. Pulling. She's waiting for she. And Brad. Okay. Mm -hmm. so wasn't there another one she left and she. There was the. No, there was the healthy. Recreation, yeah, which have machine and yeah. yeah, which is and yeah, so then there's still here, and then the fourth one was Phil and Bernie on the greenhouses. So, yeah, with the greenhouses and the food waste, we had identified actual like by law changes that yeah. needed to be made, so it's just going through that bureaucratic process, <laughs> yes, <laughs> correct. So, five, ten years, and we'll have a by law change, yes, yeah. and then uh, but uh. It was also like mostly education, right? That we were kind of focusing on. Yeah, there was some yeah. thought to do that. Yeah. yeah. So it's just writing up. I don't know, like, what, how appropriate it would be for the food council to, to write anything, like, because this would be going on the city website, right? Would it be not like city employees that would work on that, on like the actual information, like, you know, communications? folks that work for the city um, to education. yeah and then we would identify like because like I'm I'm a butcher I'm not a writer so like me doing that like I don't know what real value it would be whereas like somebody whose career is based around writing things to communicate to people would probably be a better fit for that but I mean like it would just be like more like what we think would be best on there and then like I don't, I don't know how we go about getting that information onto the website right. with, without us actually going on and changing it. Well, I think we can always take an initial stab at the writing yeah. because yeah. Uh, Katrina can't even post a social media post without being approved by the exactly. right? Yeah. Like I know yeah. you can, but really, so it has to go through those channels anyway. So I feel like yeah. And I know, for example, backyard food production, Morgan and Karen, before they left, um, they had compiled research and then they started crafting like some posts. So that's something that you and I could do for the food waste one, for example, like some ideas of like a plan for how maybe we could poll the public on, okay, the food council is interested in this policy area. What do you think about it? And yeah. kind of generating some initial um, mm -hmm. and do we have a list of the, the current policies and bylaws that the city may have regarding um, food more generally, uh, whether that's production, um, procurement, etc. There's just like the bylaw list online, yeah. and then yeah. we just essentially just read all like I well, just kind of yeah. through all the ones that were relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Do some searches. Yeah. yeah, it was mostly the nuisance bylaw that. That affected a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these topic areas, just for context too, we came up with like backyard food production, food waste, greenhouses, and healthy recreation facilities. Those were things that came up a lot in our strategic planning as like kind of lower hanging fruit or topics that the food council felt a need to explore. Mm -hmm. um, and then how does that topic relate to the bylaw? But the bylaw, the city bylaws are what they are. Um, and then, as Brad said, like a lot of them were connected to the unsightly or nuisance bylaw, for example. Yeah. It's really just how can we make sure that Charlottetown residents or community as a whole are contributing to a sustainable food system, but are not going to get caught, like are not going to get caught up in the bylaws. Like, okay, I'm doing my own composting, but technically someone right now could probably call and say it's unsightly based on the nuisance bylaw. So how can we make sure that, um, yeah. So the approach that was chosen as opposed to, so there aren't, I guess I, what I would say is there really aren't bylaws or policies mm -hmm. to do with food for the most part mm -hmm. um, currently for the city. Um, and so certainly one approach would have been to go through all of them line by line and flag everything that might pertain to food. Mm -hmm. But, um, Instead, what was chosen was to pick, as Megan said, these sort of priority areas that were identified as important and of interest to the current food council members, and then to go through the policies and kind of flag things that related to that, instead of this really detailed, completely comprehensive. And for example, the healthy rec facilities, one, the idea would be to 
have a policy in place where healthy food environments must exist in and like local producers must be that kind of policy should be in place um, but that's not relevant it's not related to any bylaw right now so that's one that would be looks very different than yeah. these so it's kind of just in limbo right now until things come happen but that's an example of to that point that exactly. would need to be written to be there related yeah. to food yeah so to speak to if there's a desire for communications piece I would agree with what just backtracking a little bit what you said Megan in terms of like I would say the Food Council would want to take, if that's a priority identified mm -hmm. for like your efforts or someone here's efforts, to put something together as a starting point. And then I would potentially take a look at it and yeah. I would pass it by our communications okay. team and that kind of thing because it sort of speaks to a conversation we've had a few times um, that I guess maybe is, is sort of relevant to bring up for new members of like, what is the role of the Food Council in all of this and where do you get involved and kind of how far is it your role to take some of these things? Um, and there's no real um, set answer. I think there's a lot of different positions that the Food Council can get involved in, and you can take things as far as you want. So you could take it as, like, kind of as far back as saying, this is a policy we think the city should have, and you're making that recommendation to committee that that policy should be created. But then, of course, you are putting that worship back on the city, and even if they think it's a great idea, there may just not be staff capacity to do it so it's kind of out of your hands at that point but at the same time your voice has been heard and you hopefully there will be ears for that somewhere within the city um, however you could also take it as far as drafting the policy and saying we think this should be a policy in which case there's a much higher chance that that will be adopted within the city because you're not relying on us finding limited staff capacity to do it now of course it's that balance of you're as a group not going to be able to make as many policies that way but you have a higher chance of getting them through or you could put a whole bunch of recommendations forward that you hope the city will work on and hope that they'll buy on a few kind of thing mm -hmm. so it's that balance of do you want to you know cradle it through the process and have a higher chance of it getting done or and it's kind of the same with the communications mm -hmm. piece if you put the effort into preparing it it's probably going to be on a faster or at least on your timeline okay so. I think that's why we, we chose those four. Yeah. Thought that okay, well, any fruit we, we might be able to look at what other communities are doing. We don't have to recreate the wheel and uh, come up with some proper presentation draft of a bylaw uh, proposal. And there's there's I think there's uh, drafts that we can use or um, templates. Good reports. Yeah. Yeah, that we could use. Uh, it's just to take that information and put them on those templates so we can present to uh, the proper people at that city to uh, to review these bylaws or policies or whatever we mm -hmm. we came up on those committees. And are uh, we are we like like in terms of scope? Like, do we only make recommendations that that like at the municipal level? Like, we don't make any at the provincial level. No, just the municipal level. However. Um, Depending on the situation, not from this council to my knowledge, but from some of our other advisory boards, there's maybe been a recommendation, say, to for the city to send a letter to the province advocating for this sort of thing, like you know, asking for that to get put up, put up the run, so that can happen potentially, but there wouldn't be direct advocacy work. So, what does the uh, work look like? Before? Well, I guess until we decide. <laughs> As a, so as a I, I guess perhaps we should summarize what's on the go and, and assess appetite from everybody in terms of what they'd like to be involved with. What do you think of that? Um, I'd be ready to put something together with the, uh, the template. For your for, for the, the greenhouses. For the greenhouses. There's enough stuff that, right? uh, that we, we found regarding uh, the nuisance law and yeah. uh, uh, zoning. Yeah, we'll use the template too for the composting. For the composting, yeah, great. Yeah, it's just that one change, yeah. one bylaw. And then uh, do you feel, do you have interest in taking on some of that communications? Does that committee have yeah, interest? No, I'm, you do want to do yeah, that? Yeah, I'm happy now Like that, okay. that it's just like, you know, this is kind of what we think should be said and then pass that on to city employees yeah. to, to move forward and I can work with 
take in on that. And, Perfect. And then since we lost Colleen, maybe one of the new members could join some of the different committees. Um, I, I, I do a lot of writing for work. Um, it's more strategic policy instead of your, your operational policy, but uh, <coughs> I'd be happy to help on the writing side of things, uh, research as well. Do we want to see new folks? Like, what areas are you interested in? Maybe. That's, yeah. There's the four. So, so I, can you say them again? I have them here. <laughs> Go for it. Um, backyard food production, um, food waste, greenhouses. Was there anything else with that one, Bernie and Phil? No. Just greenhouses? Or like I thought greenhouse there was something else in legislation, or like greenhouse enabling policy kind of. Something. Yeah. Oh, Phil had something else there. And then healthy recreation facilities. And maybe just as a summary of kind of the state of each of them and the type of work that oh. will be done with each of them. It, I don't know. I, I, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the greenhouses, it sounds to me like it's pretty much wrapped up. It's like you guys have done the research, you just need to put the recommendation forward. Is that correct? Yeah. So there's maybe not so much room to get involved with that one. Food waste, it's about, it's at a similar stage in terms of policy work, there's a little bit of work done writing up a report, and then it's more of a communications piece, um, social media and like website content. The backyard food production uh, is definitely a bigger can of worms. Um, there's been a lot of research done into what other municipalities do and what's possible. Um, there was a lot of, that was the one that had the most interest in terms of like social media polling, that kind of thing, kind of drumming up a case for it, like how much of an appetite is there within the community, like do people support that, and then trying to get the buy-in from council. So um, potentially drafting a policy to take to, to council. There was a situation with that one a number of years ago where there was a small attempt to try to, try to move towards backyard poultry, um, but it wasn't, it was coming directly from the community, it wasn't well thought through, and it got like immediately shut down. Um, anyway, so there's a lot of work to be done there, but obviously potentially some exciting things. And then the fourth one being the rec centers. Um, and there's, Megan, I'll maybe let you give. Yeah, um, so this is kind of a low hanging fruit that we identified based on an audit that was already done in partnership with the Heart and Stroke Foundation and some provincial partners um, of recreation facilities in the provinces and, or in the province. And there's a lot of like stakeholder engagement and some work happening to engage facility operators the idea of trying to help them get to a place where they can um, they can maybe do some healthy swaps, for example, um, just recognizing that many, many households and families spend a lot of hours in these facilities and what does that look like. But we thought as being an opportunity to do the policy piece, um, the reality is, is I didn't feel, I've had some conversation, I didn't feel comfortable moving full steam ahead with the policy without then um, ensuring that that engagement piece and that the facilitate facility operators are supported so it's kind of in in standstill right now but certainly a piece that we can explore um, as yeah. the fall goes on and i think that there was some i know i think there's more stakeholders and, and engagement that you're talking about than, than i kind of even am aware of yeah but it's all done through the provincial children nutrition exactly. Yeah, exactly but there is just on that particular topic there's the potential for some support i think yeah. within the city yeah. um like at the staff level that could be drummed up and we haven't really taken strides towards that but if the ball gets rolling on that one i do think that there's potential for that that um that if if as the food council can and obviously some of them our hands but mm -hmm. can, once those steps being, are being taken there might be room to sneak it into somebody's actual paid position so having heard those four uh, themes that we're working on for bylaws, yeah. uh, is there interest? I think we're going to have to reorganize those committees because we lost uh, yeah. three, three um, counselors. And I'd also just say too that there is that. If there's like not as much appetite for policy work, there's also the asset map that does need attention as well. So feel free to sort of identify that as an area of interest as well. And, and do you want to speak more on the asset map, or did we cover enough um, for going to make a decision on? I think people probably have a fairly good sense, but if anybody has questions on that, feel free to ask. Sorry, I would love to be part of the backyard food production. Great. And um, I could also help out on the asset map. Sure. Thank you. Maybe you want to work on food waste. Yeah. 
Okay. Is, is it kind of early stages on that uh, research? Uh, um, is that like the communication? Yeah, the re yeah the research has been, been pretty much done. I can share with you what we did. Yeah. Um, it's essentially well, I don't know, illegal. But the by the bylaws identify that you, you're not allowed to compost in your backyard in Charlottetown. And obviously that's not true, because uh, people do it. But uh, it's just the bylaws just need to be kind of rewritten. Just this one specific one to identify that you are allowed to do that. Um, yeah. For yeah. parameters or something, guidance. Yeah. Do do so. Yeah, exactly. Again, something is yeah. missing. And then it's just mostly looking at like, you know, like other towns and cities, uh, you know, we were comparing Charlottetown more so to universities as opposed to other cities uh, for how they manage food waste because of the small population, like Carleton University has the same population as Charlottetown. So when you, when you look at, like comparing it to Halifax is not really, you know, uh, so uh, it's just like Fredericton, for example, has a really good little breakdown on, on, on composting and everything. So it's just kind of bringing that to to the website because uh, right now it just essentially links right to the IWMC, yeah. uh, which is like a cram corporation. So. Right, so the topic, the, the 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 topic of the issue is food waste. Uh, back air composting is is, is one component yeah. of it. Is yeah. Is there an area identified to that? Yeah. Is, is the scope you know broader? Yeah, we were also looking at like way like. Like it's more, it's it's not like wasting food. It's it's the waste that is attached to food. So most likely packaging. So um, we were looking at uh, whether or not people could bring pack their own packaging to stores. And there's an initiative already uh, being done by the city to kind of go that. But COVID, like no one's bringing their own packaging to stores now because of COVID. So. It, that was kind of that kind of fell to the wayside, uh, but there's already a lot of momentum on that. With uh, sorry, what was the, the bringing initiative Charlotte again? Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, uh, bringing Charlottetown. So that's um, that, that's already kind of being done. Uh, so that was good, but it's uh, but that's also linked to the provincial health uh, code yeah. for restaurants and stuff like that. So that's outside of our yeah. jurisdiction. <laughs> Yeah. And I'll say too, like, there's definitely, say, room within the food waste project, for example, for more work, but there's mm -hmm. also the opportunity, like, if, if the appetite is more put together, this communications piece, and put forward the recommendation to amend this one bylaw, and then that's kind of the bow tied on the food waste for what's the more immediate, and there's interest in some other realm of food policy that aren't the four that we've identified, and in two months when all that's wrapped up. Mm -hmm that's what you want to move on to. Like there's, I think there's opportunity to do that too. Um, which is kind of what's happening with the um, greenhouse one right now, I think, is yeah. that in you know, a month or two, these recommendations will move forward and then that one can kind of be tied up and then we can be done. I have to take off for Thanks, Brad. Okay. See you guys next month. See you later. Thank you, um, I could contribute to the asset, food asset map. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm pretty plugged into all that. Great. And then, Sean, do you want to go with food waste? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. We'll just, and Brian, from the stick, we'll just see out your greenhouses? Yeah. Yeah. And then that leaves. What were the communications on, on that? Were uh, there communications attached to it? Not really. Okay. I mean, I think we'd want to do a little, if, if <laughs> when, when the bylaw has been amended, I think we'd want to do a post kind of saying, promoting it. But at the same time, sometimes it's nicer to keep these I did not get controversy, but mm -hmm. and we know we all know that we just now made it so that people can do it. And no for this. This yeah, exactly. So um, for now, it's just kind of that bylaw piece. Okay. Um, so we do have some next steps. We have people on committees uh, that we'll get together and, and wrap up at least some of the, the bylaw stuff. What we we can wrap up. Yeah. Uh, there'll be like I, I think the. Asset map is just continuous work, identifying, getting familiar with it. Yeah, I'll probably um, set up a meeting for the three of us. Megan, do you want to be on the committee or would you like to step sure, the yeah. asset, map? asset map? Do you want to be on it or do you want to step in? Um, I'd be cool to just maybe see how things go with other folks and <laughs> I'm here. And <laughs> I feel that way. I'm here. <laughs> I mean, 
mean, I love the project, but I, it could be cool to have like fresh new lenses and, yeah. and stuff. And Whatever I'm you happy want. to contribute as needed. Okay. Obviously, cool. but so then I'll set up a meeting for the three of us, and we can um, see where we can take it. So yeah. It's like you have one committee, and then there's like little committees. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Kind kind of that seems to be the approach we're gonna. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Same committee. I was like, wait a second. Uh, yeah, I guess the work committee had a couple of different I got it. Yeah. yeah. It's more like a project team. Team. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think some will require meetings and some won't. Like, I don't think there's been a whole lot of separate meetings for the policy work. It's kind of been more like divvy up and go. I just think it'd be nice with the asset map to have the three of us so meet and kind of have like a. Make like the backyard work. food production, for example, will you just like take the names of the people who's on this team and then. Like kind of assign work to do. Um, or it's more like we just kind of continue communicating. Yeah, you continue communicating. Okay. For yourselves, and so now I guess though at the moment it's just it's only you on okay. your food. Yeah. I don't know if that's <laughs> that's a lot I feel of work like for one person. I'll be looking in the mirror. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Um, it is a pretty big one, so I feel like we definitely need I think other folks on that one as well. Okay. Um, but is there anybody else that's interested? Um, if not, perhaps if you want to like start off and then as people free up, hopefully in the next couple months from other things, maybe people can jump on board. Um, there was quite a bit of work done on the back. And I will send you the report that I have that was done. Yeah, there was just like. Oh, the I'd be happy to work on that too. Okay. You feel like we're pretty well, you don't really need any more input from me on the. Uh, I'll reading. probably email you and call you for a few things, but. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. right, I didn't catch that. Phil, are you going to join Samara then? Or something? I didn't hear you. Are you joining back here? Is that what you sure. said? Sure. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, great. So, <laughs> it's just you and Samara right now. Okay. So and I know that. Thanks for contacting me. Yeah. Right. And I know that Morgan and um, Morgan and Karen have talked yeah. done like a lot of all the background research and things like that. So, I think it's at a place where you can start like kind of doing some research and things like that. So, I think it's at a place where you can start like a lot of all the background I think it's at a place where you can start like a communications or education plan or what what are the ways forward yeah. for that. Yeah. I'll forward that information on Google Drive? Uh, maybe. Okay. But the Google is really a mess. Um, but so I will send it. <laughs> I will send it. Uh, yeah. And once we work on these things, I I guess we'll, we'll when we come back as a council in the next few meetings we'll try to identify other things that we can work on. Yeah. Research and yeah. Things may come up from the public. Sometimes we get uh, ideas from the public. Hey, have you thought of this or that? And the committee or the council looks at it and says, hey, yeah, maybe we should yeah. kind of work towards this. And then that's where we kind of get our, our, mm -hmm. our objectives. And we might break up into committees to work on it, or we might just work as a council and, and get things, yeah. things done. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I'd say take like the next month or like till the next sort of meeting and get acquainted with, especially for new members, get acquainted with the areas you've been working on, think about what next steps you want to take, maybe do some work to move them forward. But if it's even if it's just a matter of getting clear on what needs to be done and kind of setting that roadmap, that's great. Well, maybe I'll just clarify, is there anyone else that should be liaising with on uh, food waste and yeah, prior it would, work done? It would be Brad and myself. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So there's already like some background work, but we'll share that with you. We'll just connect over email. And then I guess just with Rex then, with yeah. Rex, it's Sheena and Megan, yeah. you're both happy to stay there? Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> it's, it's not really quiet. quiet. We've had to <laughs> stick up. <laughs> Great. Um, okay. Uh, I think we did C, D, and E. Yeah, um, and I guess I'll just add one more note that if, as you're going through these things and starting work, if you think of other priority areas for policy for down the road, um, just like keep those in mind because I do think that some of these will get wrapped up in the next few months and uh, be good to sort of have in your minds you maybe use for discussion what uh, what might be next. Um, I'm going to put Sheena down for asset Oh, so great. great. I, it, it'll be in the actions, but I mean, okay, okay. So four of us then. then. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Sheena. But you're just saying, I'm going to put her. I'm really not doing it anymore. I'm putting it on you. And you know, but I'm happy to connect it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next on the item or on the agenda is new business. Uh, Phil's letter. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, um, I'd like to deal with the apartment issue first. Okay. Because I think that'll just be real quick. Okay. Okay. Um, there's an apartment building that exists at the corner of Young and Upper Prince. And uh, on that lot, there's new construction occurring. Uh, and they were going great guns for quite a while, and then for the last two and a half, three weeks, there hasn't been anything going on. And I'm not sure why, but I seem to recall in previous meetings uh, when we were reviewing bylaws, uh, somebody came up with information that any apartment building has to have 10% of the land footprint to be green space. Yeah. Yeah, right. was, yeah, we did say and that. there is no green space left on this lot now that that new building is going up. And I think in that conversation, it was like you either had to leave 10% or you had to make a contribution to parks and recreation yeah, or something. A, I think it was the Parkland Reserve. So I'm just wondering how we might go about finding out what's going on because there is no green space left on this lot. I'd call planning here. What's that? I would call Planning and Heritage. Who? Planning and Heritage, the Planning and Heritage. Department. Oh, Planning and Heritage. Okay, I thought you were trying to say the name or something. No. Okay. Um, but I think they'd be the only ones that, I mean, they would know zoning, they would know what applications were filled out, they would know, I don't know how much that's public information, but but they, they'd be the ones that would know. Yeah. All right, I'll give them a call. But I'm pretty sure that there's a fee that can be paid in lieu of the green space, and that's probably what they did. Hopefully. Okay. Phil's no mind up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the other thing uh, I shared with you all uh, via email um, a letter that was sent to me by whom I forget. Um, written by the new Premier of Nova Scotia who uh, had issued, sent out uh, ministerial letters to uh, each of the two ministers. And so uh, the one I received was from the uh, new address to the new minister of agriculture. And I, when I read it, I thought that the mandate um, had a lot of interesting ideas that I thought we could possibly incorporate into, uh, into our own mandate. Um, and, and first and foremost, I thought was particularly interesting with was prepare a timeline for the completion of the tasks that you say you're going to do. Okay. I think that would be really helpful if we started doing that uh, when we come up with ideas and solutions and things to do. Uh, but uh, they included examining policies and programs to reduce the cost of healthy foods for consumers. Uh, the other one was support and encourage local food consumption with the goal of 20% of money being spent on local food. Uh, and I've been an advocate of that for a long time, did some studies in terms of what the economic impact for PEI would be, and it's rather phenomenal. And uh, just imagine if we had uh, some sort of promotional or encouragement campaign where not just consumers were spending that kind of money, but if the restaurants would spend 20% of their food budget on local food, the impact that, that could have mm -hmm. in PEI would be pretty phenomenal. Um, Phil, sorry, do you mind if I just add to that comment? Yeah, let me go through it by and then okay. you can talk because it's already a quarter after seven. Um, lead efforts to determine how to reach that 20% target. Right. Uh, so not just say that it should be done, but actually be active in promoting it somehow. Um, and then lead in the development of policies that encourage local food consumption by the public, which uh, I think is part of our mandate already, but again, I don't think we've really been too active in uh, promoting that idea. Yeah. Um, so with that, there were and you could look at the, uh, the letter that you received from me, but uh, there were also points being made of how to work with every other department so that, uh, you know, I think there was recognition by the Premier that 
agriculture was also tied to environmental sustainability and economic development um, and uh, included things not just with agriculture but also fisheries and forestry as well. So uh, I was really impressed with the letter and I thought that there were some, you know, I, I, I like the idea of maybe the council taking on some initiatives like this, particularly the idea of uh, if Nova Scotia is going to have a goal of 20% food, uh, 20% of their food bill spent locally, um, I think maybe we should adopt that idea as well. Do we know how they're planning on doing that? No, this is just a letter for them to start to figure out how to do that. So the point but I should tell you that I have presentations of other mm -hmm. cities yeah, in Canada yeah. that so have done similar things, yeah. and the economic impact that it's had has been phenomenal. Okay. Just to make sure, like you're suggesting this as maybe for us for Charlotte. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, this is a provincial mandate, but yeah. you know, I'm talking specifically Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So what I was going to build on earlier was the 20% food piece, and I immediately thought of our conversation that was kind of parked for the food asset mapping and that was why we didn't include the restaurants on the food asset map because we know that there would be some restaurants that do not purchase anything locally while there are others who spend locally for majority of, of their, their um, food, food purchases. Well actually, so. actually with that I, I found that uh, that's one of the shortcomings of our asset map is that it identifies an asset as just a food place. But if if the bridge were shut down, yeah. how long would those food places be assets? Yeah. So that's yeah. that's exactly what I'm getting at right now actually, is that we had that conversation but it was tabled because it's so complex and nebulous. Like how do you identify what is local food, the definition of local food, Colleen has done a lot of research in that. So I think Phil, like I think I am fully in support. I think it's something we should look into and like add to whether it's just research and it doesn't go anywhere, but I think it's tied to the food asset mapping conversation because at, to your point, exactly, if, if the ones that are listed there don't have access to the food, as we saw implications from COVID, are they really food assets? And we don't have any restaurants, we don't have a lot of um, assets that are in the community on there for the reason that we don't know if they're defined as local food or not. So that's that's all I wanted that's to say. That's why we put the asset map up because... Yeah, we stopped the conversation because we, we just had to get talking there. And talking and when we did have them, that would never go out. Yeah. So that, I, thanks for bringing that up. That hasn't been forgotten. It's, it's still to be completed with if you're suggesting tonight of 20%, whatever percentage it is, uh, I, yeah. I only speak for one, I like the idea. Um, if you need to get an understanding of the baseline, so that you get your current state, what's yeah. the current uh, level of uh, local food purchases. Uh, why don't you have to track? Would you have access to that kind of information? Because years ago we tried to get it, and the grocery stores are not going to give you that. At least they weren't going to give it to us. I don't believe we track like province-wide um, how much uh, of food purchases are, are considered local. Um, I can double check, but I don't believe that's something we track with the department. Yeah, um, yeah it would, would be good to get a decent understanding of the current state, um, even if it's a survey, for example. Uh, or, or, or to benchmark it against research done on that area, you know, in comparable Canadian provinces or cities, this is the percentage um, before setting a target. It, the, the other thing on the how is, is and I'm sure it's come up before, is um, around food uh, procurement. Um, so, you know, does the municipality, this is a genuine question, I don't know the answer, does the municipality have a policy regarding uh, procurement of, of food? Yeah. I have a number of follow-up things. Um, <laughs> on procurement, we'll start there. No, um, it is on the radar. Um, we actually have a big funding application in right now just for a sustainable procurement in general. Mm -hmm. Hoping to do a lot of work around that. And with that, one of the things we would want to think about is food. I mean, it's, again, even like touching on what Megan said, it's a complicated question.
kind of like, you know, but I like the idea of us having some kind of a policy and maybe having preferred mm -hmm. suppliers that we've sort of vetted to know yeah. where that food's coming from, that kind of thing. But at the moment, no, it's not something that we have. I'm thinking things like, like hospitals and schools and yeah, prisons. And yeah, it'd be great to see. And I mean, sometimes our role as the city is supporting that, and sometimes our role is like paving the way of yeah. like we do it and hope. That and that's why we had actually selected recreation facilities as the first setting for this, mm -hmm. and subsequently yeah. we go to hospitals and yeah. post secondary institutions as settings and institutions that could embed what Phil's talking about here. Yeah. Um, because there's already the research, local research has been done in rec facilities, so it was a Morgan Palmer and I saw it as a lower hanging fruit than some of the other institutions. But so when you say rec facilities, like what do you mean in terms of like what they're serving for food? Like what? Well, there's canteens in every rink and PEI, like oh, that like serve rink fries yeah, yeah, and yeah, gotcha, okay. junk and chips. Yeah, but right, so we so could so. actually maybe be instead supporting yeah. local producers and gotcha. having healthy options that both affect health outcomes of yeah. people in travel town and PEI, but also yeah. the like the food purchase and food procurement. Awesome. Yeah. And people are always talking about the hospital, like how just like the, the quality of the food at the hospital and how ironic that is. So yeah, that's, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, with the questions around local, um, just a few pieces of information and food for thought. One being that I think it's a really good point about knowing what the current state is. Um, I do know so the city does something called, I think it's W. Something or other. Anyway, it's all it's this huge collab, like national or international collaborative of data, basically. So there's these metrics that we track every year, um, some relating to local food. I know that there was a big struggle and we couldn't find the answers to some, but I also know that we were able to find a little bit of information. So I can follow up on that and find out what it is that we do know, uh, what our staff that works on that were able to find out. But secondly, with that, um, and I guess relating to this specifically and a little bit more tangentially, is that um, something that the city is undertaking and that's coming more and more on my desk is updates to both the city's official plan and our integrated community sustainability plan. Um, so there will be lots of them, I think, for this group to be consulted on that in a food context and the wider community. Right now, it's all work being done as internal. Um, and we're a little ways up from that, but I think that certain things like that may integrate well into those plans. Um, and then also um, with that, there are certain aspects that we're commissioning studies on to inform the official plan. Um, so there could be, um, certainly in some of those meetings, I can bring up the topic of local food and potentially say if we do need more information on what a baseline is to be able to integrate that into the plan. I have no promises, but potentially that's a study that could be done. That would be amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> <I'll stop. laughs> well, that's, I, th I don't know if Phil remembers, but that's what, and, or Sheena, but that's what exactly what we were talking about. Like, who's going to do the work to study what the local context is so that we can then move forward some of this policy? Yeah. So I would encourage you guys, as I mean, local food's a great place to start, and I'll think of that when I'm in these meetings lot of them coming up um, but but in general what food priorities would you want to think about in terms of an official plan for the city and it's I mean the official plan is relatively high level a lot of the time but it will also do the sustainability plan where there's maybe some room for some more specifics and and I think that food is something we should be thinking about mentioning within the official plan as well so something to think about and not urgent um, it's going to be a long process but Anything else, Phil? Um, well, that is, it's uh, it's good to remind ourselves of what's going on out here. Um, so we get caught in the weeds, so that's I, I like the idea. Some of the ideas have that and it's provincial, Nova Scotia, but it certainly can be done at a local level as well. Mm -hmm. And we are a committee that deals with food that could get things mm -hmm. going. So um, keep that on your agenda. Yeah, it's almost uh, seven thirty now, but uh, maybe we could uh, make this an agenda item for the next meeting, just yeah. to look at some of these issues closer. Mm -hmm.
And Katrina, do you have do we have some more callings or research that she did on local food? I do have it. Yeah, I don't know if she. I'll resend it. If yeah, it maybe could you recirculate that so that yeah. we could maybe if if folks have the time read that and like sure. kind of mm -hmm. percolate some of that stuff and think on it and yeah, um, then it's an agenda item for next time. Yeah. Oh. Can you put it in? Can you put it in there? Because I need to send. And fill the backyard food one. I should probably send you guys the food right. waste one and then, yeah, you break your head of me. Yeah. <laughs> and then that one. So we need to add that to the agenda for next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about. Do you want to talk specifically about the local food stuff or about food council priorities in general in that regard? Uh, I think we could quickly go over the, the letter, the priorities, and then decide which ones are relevant to sure. us. And uh, I like also adding um, deadlines and dates and a calendar and a schedule to yeah. the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, important. That give us a little more direction. So maybe that's something for people to think about over the next month as you get familiar with your sort of committee area and think about what work needs to be done, like accompanying that with timeline. We are volunteering. Obviously, we may not always reach those deadlines, but it, it's nice to have something yeah. to work towards. Is the agenda for the next meeting already full? Like, how does that no. work? No. 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 We put it together yeah. probably a couple of weeks beforehand. Yeah, I do. I have an idea. I would like to talk about the water pumping stations and how we can add something around those because that's something I've noticed. And there's three. Winslow Road, Lower Malpec Road, and Mount Edward Road. There's massive water pump st pumping stations, and they have like a lot of room there, and we, you could be growing so much food, and the water's right there, so you don't have to do a lot in order for that to happen. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's a great idea. I'm Something not just sure. like. Is that it's something we fit into an agenda to talk about? You can or talk about it. I think you're going to need to talk to Water and Sewer. I'm assuming. But it's on, it's on the notes. So so it's yeah. It. We're going to talk about it next time. We'll talk yeah. about it next time and figure out where to go from there. Well, because now I can do my research properly. I yeah. wasn't really yeah. sure how the structure of this worked mostly. Yeah. So. Story <laughs> ideas. Okay. Yeah, so let's talk about we'll it. talk about so it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We talk about a lot of. Stuff. Yeah. 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 I That's why the dates and deadlines are a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it makes it real. Yeah. And before we finish, hopefully at some point we'll be able to have. Uh, it's not just meetings, but we can have a social or something, and we we'll, we'll do a lot of, of work. Um, we have fun too. And yeah. We try. To have some fun. <laughs> um, it's been a couple of months, I think, since we met. Mm -hmm. So this was. Uh, cobwebs out of the way and Rusty. we'll move yes. yeah, forward. Uh, welcome to the three nice. who uh, the, the three new counselors. Much appreciate uh, you uh, wanting to uh, to work in your community and work on the council. Mm -hmm. And uh, pleasure to see everybody who was on the council previously. Nice to see the faces. Do you get a lot of applications? I was curious. We got it. Not, I'm pretty good. Yeah. Maybe yeah. <laughs> 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 ish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I didn't know if it would be around. A good, like, uh, Baker's Dozen. Yeah. Baker's Dozen. Yeah. 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 Um, so that they're, yeah. So, and it's 7.30. We, uh, before someone comes up with another idea, we'll have to Put it on the sticky note for Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Jordan? Jordan. And a second. second. Uh, Samara seconded. Sometimes I can't see hands as they're like this. So. <laughs> oh, I'll do mine down quickly because I thought it was too late. Okay, second. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, and Thank I was at the master. Thanks, everyone. Welcome to the process.